Tonight we have with us a true living legend. Now this is the first time I've ever worked with Mary Martin, and I have to tell you, this <laughs> it hasn't been work at all. Now I could give you some of her credits, but that would take lots of time away from you to enjoy a truly remarkable Broadway lady who has had a love affair with American audiences, as well as audiences all over the world, and get this, <laughs> for the last 50 years. And she told me I'm allowed to say that. <laughs> What an honor just to be on the stage with a national treasure, Mary Martin. I can't say anymore, just thank you. 50 years, what keeps one going for 50 years? Well, having some of the most talented, creative people in the world, like Richard Rogers, Oscar Hammerstein, Josh Logan, helps a great deal. And to be married to a man named Richard Halliday, who produced our career for 33 years, it also takes a very special Oh, sp something song, philosophy of a song, such as Nellie Forbish had in South Pacific. When the sky is a bright canary yellow, I forget every cloud I've ever seen. So they call me a cockeyed optimist. Immature and incurably green I have heard people rant and rave and bellow That we're done and we might as well be dead But I'm only a cockeyed optimist And I can't get it into my head I hear the human race is falling on its face And hasn't very far to go but every whippoorwill is selling me a bill and telling me it just ain't so. I could say life is just a bowl of jello and appear more intelligent and smart. But I'm stuck like a dope with a thing called hope and I can't get it out of my heart. Not as much time and money and years and as I have in musical theater, you're bound to have been, well, had some favorite songs. And this happened to me in a show called One Touch of Venus. Cheryl Crawford was the producer, Kurt Vile the composer, Ogden Nash the lyricist, and Sid Perlman wrote the book. It would be my first starring part ever. And I had to audition. And this time it was for the great couturier, Mamboche. And he was in Kurt Weill's very small apartment, and he was sitting right next to the piano, so I really didn't know what to do. So I looked around and saw a chair, and went, he, I just had him right up against the wall. He couldn't move, and I sat right down, and I looked right straight at him and sang this. That's him, that's him. The way you feel when Antoine has finished with your hair, that's him, that's him. You know the way you feel when you smell bread baking, the way you feel when suddenly a tooth stops aching. Wonderful world, wonderful you, 
That's him. That's him. He is as simple as a swim in summer. Not arty, not actory. He's like a plumber when you need a plumber. <laughs> ah, he's satisfactory. You know the way you feel when you want to knock on wood. The way you feel when your heart is gone for good. Wonderful world, wonderful you. That's him. You could shuffle him with millions, soldiers and civilians. I'd pick him out in the darkest caves and hallways. I would know him always, beyond a doubt. Identification comes easily to me because. That's he. You know the way you feel about the rhapsody in blue. That's him. Ah, that's him. The way you feel about a hat created just for you. That's him. That's him. You know the way you feel when the fireflies glow. The way you feel when overnight your hips grow slimmer. Wonderful world, wonderful you. That's he. stage for just a few minutes. That'll be all right with you. I'll you be back. Oh, you'll be back? Uh -huh. Oh, good. Uh, okay. As long as you'll be no, back. Don't, 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 don't go away. I won't go away. Fifty years ago, her career began. Now, how did the wide-eyed country girl from Weatherford, Texas, you know, make it to a Broadway musical? The year was 1938. The show was Cole Porter's Leave It to Me. Get this cast, by the way. We had uh, William Gaxton, Victor Moore, Sophie Tucker, Tamara, and uh, Mary Martin singing, Oh, You Know. <laughs> Good 
ball game may make a play for the grassy. I never dream of making the team cause my heart belongs. a part of this very special evening. I'd like to express how I feel about a young girl I know very well. And a, a very young man. More or less. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, we're almost the same age. You know. <laughs> I don't know if you're a little older than I am or I'm a little older than you, but it doesn't matter. I'd like to sing these, not sing, I'd like to say these words to you. There was a girl, a very special, enlightened girl, who wandered very far, very far, over land and sea. A little shy, but with sparkling eye, and very wise was she. And then one day, one magic day, he came her way. And though they spoke of many things, many things, this they said to me, the greatest thing you'll ever learn is just to love and be loved in return. Ladies and gentlemen, that was marvelous. I always get a kick out of programs like this, great songs from great musicals, because as the executive branch's unofficial elder statesman of show business, <laughs> I actually remember those showstoppers. <laughs> I found that although there are a lot of stage-struck young people around, some in this audience, when you say, remember the season of 1938, they smile in a funny way as if you'd said, remember the Louisiana Purchase. <laughs> but this evening has demonstrated again how wonderfully vigorous Broadway and the American Musica have been over the years. Fifty years ago, when Mary Martin first appeared before the footlights, Anybody looking for a good show to see would have had an amazing choice. If Mary's Cole Porter musical had been sold out, well, you could have gone to see Kurt Vile's Knickerbocker Holiday, or the musical review Hells Are Poppin'. 
or Mark Blitstein's The Cradle Will Rock, or Harold Rome's Pins and Needles, are not one but two Rogers and Hart shows, I'd Rather Be Right and The Boys from Syracuse. There were all these shows and a dozen others. For these 50 years and even much longer, the American musical theater has been a life force that entertains and nourishes us all. The American musical, talk about a wonderful run. But once again, to all the performers, B. Arthur, Jennifer Holliday, Dorothy Loudon, Mary Martin, Elaine Page, and the Marvel himself, Marvin Hamlish, <laughs> our heartfelt gratitude for a splendid show. And to everyone here at the White House and this evening or watching at home, thank you all for joining us, and God bless you. Next, on Seasons of a Navajo, we'll learn about the close relationship between Navajo life and nature. Stay with us and watch Seasons of a Navajo, next on ETV.